optometry in 1992, Doctor of Optometry in 1998, and MSc in Environmental and Public Health Microbiology 2004, MSc Ocular Health 2014, and PhD in Environmental and Public Health Microbiology 2018, all from the prestigious University of Benin. He had his fellow American Academy of Optometry, FAAO, in 2006. He did his mandatory national youth service in Gaskia Optical Services, Sokoto, in 1993. Professor Yamu joined the services of the University of Benin as a higher optometrist in 1994. He converted to a lectureship position as lecturer two in the Department of Optometry in 1998 and rose through the ranks to the position of a full professor of optometry in 2018. His area of primary research focus is on cornea and contact lenses. Professor Yamo has held several administrative and academic positions both within and outside the University of Benin, such as course advisor 1994 to 2011, departmental timetable stroke examination officer 1995 to 2009, assistant dean faculty of life sciences 2010 to 2014, acting head department of optometry 2016 to 2018, congregation representing in senate. 2011 to 2015. Faculty of Life Sciences representative to University of Benin Admissions Board, 2018 to 2021. Member, Faculty of Science Sanitation Committee, 2003 to 2004. Member, Subcommittee on Assessments of Lecturers by Students, Faculty of Life Sciences, 2007. Departmental Final Year Seminar Coordinator, 2009 to 2011. Hall Warden, Hall 4, 2009 to 2010. Visiting Lecturer, Department of Optometry and Visual Science, Faculty of Bioscience, College of Science, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, Ghana, 2007. Editor, African Journal of Health, Safety and Environmental, and Environmental 2020 till date. President, Association of Nigerian Optometric Educators. <laughs> Professor Yamu has over 30 publications in local, national, and international journals. <laughs> he has attended and delivered 19 conference proceedings both nationally and internationally. He has served as external examiner in a state university. He has supervised over 90 Doctor of Optometry students and over 70 postgraduate candidates in both academic, MSc, and professional counterparts, FNCO. Professor Yamu belongs to several professional bodies and associations such as Members, National Optometric, Nigerian Optometric Association, MNOA, 1992. Member, Association of Nigerian Optometric Educators, 1996. Member, International Association of Contactless Educators, 2002. Member, Applied Environmental Bioscience and Public Health Research. Group, group 2, 2018. Professor Yamu has passion for spirit lifting songs and watching, watching sports. He is a Christian and married to Dr. Mrs. Joy Edogogo in Yamu. And their union is blessed with twins. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Yamu 
a professor of optometry. So it's a new guy is in our black blockchain. to stand upon the protocol already established by the Public Relations Officer of the University of Benin. <clears throat> Madam Vice Chancellor, it is with great joy and deep sense of accomplishment and grateful to Almighty God, the one that is upholding, propelling and sustaining the universe by the word of his power. To him be all the glory for his grace upon me to stand before this great audience to present my inaugural lecture. I also wish to express my profound gratitude to the University of Benin Authority under the leadership of our caring, focused, success-oriented, indefatigable Vice Chancellor Professor Nina Emotia Salami for creating the enabling environment for many qualitative researches and presentation of inaugural lectures to showcase research activities in the university. This 261st inaugural lecture in the lecture series of the University of Benin is the fourth lecture to be delivered by the Department of Optometry. It is also the sixth inaugural lecture in optometry in Nigeria and the first in my special area, Korea and Korea Classes. <laughs> my lecture today, titled The Eye and Vision How Healthy the Optometrist Perspective, navigates the experiences I have accumulated in the course of my academic voyage, which I will share the great, with this great audience. Doctors of optometry are independent primary health care providers who examine, diagnose, treat, and manage diseases and disorders of the visual system, the eye, and associated structures, as well as diagnose related systemic conditions. They examine the internal and external structure of the eyes to diagnose eye diseases like glaucoma, cataract, retinal disorders, systemic diseases like hypertension and diabetes, nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, and presbyopia. Optometrists also do testing to determine the patient's ability to focus and coordinate the eyes and to judge depth and color and see colors accurately. They will prescribe eyeglasses and contact lenses, low vision aids, vision therapy and medicine to treat eye diseases. As primary eye care providers, optometrists are an independent part of the healthcare team and an entry point into the healthcare system. They are skilled in the core management of care that affects the eye health and vision for their patients and an excellent source of referral to other healthcare professionals. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye is seen, the whole body shall be full of light. Matthew 6, 22. The eye is considered as a radiant energy detector whose wavelength response is strictly between 400 and 800 nanometers. It is the organ of sight. The fundamental function of the eye is vision. Vision is a process in which light is absorbed by a pigment in the photoreceptor cell and the photochemistry that ensues ultimately produces a transient electrical signal that is transmitted to the brain and interpreted as visual image. Robert and Cancero, 1977. The rods and the cones are located in the photoreceptor layer. They convert light energy photons into electrical impulse signals. Rod helps with night oscotopic and peripheral vision, the cones are more concentrated in the macula, central part of the retina, and are responsible for photopic and color vision. The electrical signals from the photoreceptors are transmitted for the amatory cells, the horizontal cells, and also the bipolar cells, the ganglion cells to the optic, to the optic nerve, by generation of action potentials to the brain through the visual pathway. Superior colliculus, protector nucleus to the Brodmann area 17, Peristriate and parastriate areas 18 and 19 for interpretation as visual images and correspondingly relaying information through the efferent fibers to pass from the eye for necessary action. Robert Casero, 1977, then Penny, 2021. This is the longitudinal section of the eye showing every part of the eye. In the emetropic eye, light rays entering the eye are focused on the retina by the cornea which is responsible for about 70% of the dietary power of the eye, and the lens, which is responsible for about 15 dietary power of the eye, forming a sharp image that is transmitted to the brain. The crystalline lens is elastic in young people, but it is inelastic in old people. During accommodation, the ciliary muscles contract to alter the shape of the lens to properly focus images. 
Refractive errors and failure of the eye to focus image sharply on the retina, causing blurred vision. Refractive errors include hyperopia or long sightedness, myopia or short sightedness, astigmatism. Hyperopia and astigmatism can be also combined to form simple or compound hyperopic astigmatism, simple or compound myopic astigmatism, mixed astigmatism. In hyperopia, the point of focus is formed at a fictitious point behind the retina. Because the cornea is too flatly curved, the axial length is shorter or both. Children and young adults with mild hyperopia may be able to see distance and near clearly because of their ability to accommodate. In adults with higher grade of error, both near and distance objects are blocked. Hyperopia is strictly corrected, is usually corrected with converse or cross lenses. In myopia or short sightedness, the point of focus is in front of the retina. Probably because the cornea is too steep, or the axial length of the eye is too long, or both. Distant objects are blocked, but near objects are clearly seen. Myopia is usually corrected with concave lenses. Myopic refractive error in children frequently increases until after adolescence. In astigmatism, a point object is not rendered as a point image. It is brought to two different points, focal points in which the center is what we call the center of least confusion. A cylindrical lens is used to correct astigmatism. A cylindrical lenses have no power, have no refractive power along the axis meridian and are concave or convex along the power meridian. This is the uh, diagram of the uh, metropic short-sightedness, long-sightedness and the correction of short-sightedness and long-sightedness. The most common device for correcting refractive metropia and press myopia, which is regarded as age related inelasticity of the crystalline lens, is spectacle lens prescription. The other device that is used for correcting refractive metropia and press myopia is the use of contact lenses. Contact lenses are medical devices that are exclusively made of high precision plastic materials that are biocompatible with the ocular tissues and molded to somewhat conform to the complex cups of the cornea, the coloscleral junction, and the sclera for the purpose of correcting refractive and metropia, press myopia, and metropia, cosmesis, therapeutics, and so on and so forth. Some of my contributions to promoting eye health and vision. Cornea health. The central cornea thickness is an index for assessing the cornea health status, held in 2003. The determination of central cornea thickness has gained relevance in recent years partly due to the growing interest in the continued use of contact lenses, refractive surgery and laser institute keratomyosis, refractive keratectomy, and early identification of those who are at a higher risk of developing primary glaucoma. Cornea thickness provides valid information about its physiological condition and possible changes associated with diseases, traumas, and hypoxia. The year of so many 2012, investigated the gender and cornea dimension in adult Nigerians with normal intraocular pressure. The corneal dimensions included the corneal curvature, the corneal diameter, and the central corneal thickness, which is also referred to as CCT. The CCT was measured with ultrasound parkimetry. The IOP was determined with no contact diameter. The horizontal and vertical diameters were measured with ruler, and central corneal curvature was measured by keratometry. The mean values obtained as presented. A 10 year increase in age was associated with a 7 micrometer decrease in CCT. Males had significantly wider HVID, that's horizontal visible range diameter, than females. Subjects in older age group had narrower HVID and vertical, uh, and vertical visible array diameter. The corneal curvature, corneal diameter, and gender did not significantly affect CCT. In conclusion, CCT of the Motensive Nigerian adults decreases with increasing age. There was no correlation between CCT and IOP in intensive subjects. CCT was not significantly affected by gender, corneal curvature, and corneal diameter. Furthermore, we have a need to study the relationship between central corneal thickness and intraocular pressure in normals and subjects with open armor glaucoma. The purpose of the study was to determine whether central corneal thickness is a better predictor than intraocular pressure in the early identification of those at higher risk of developing glaucoma. Table 1 analyzed the factors that we use for the placement of the subjects in the respective groups. We have CCT, we have, um, we have CCT, 
we have IUP vertical visible and uh, 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 contour disc ratio, mean vertical CD ratio, CD ratio asymmetry. The difference in mean IUP between normals and glaucomas of this was statistically significant. Similarly, there was a significant difference in mean CCT between normals and glaucoma subjects. There was a significant inverse correlation between CCT and age in the glaucoma group, and the linear regression analysis predicts a decrease of 7 micrometers in CCT for every decade. A strong positive association was found between CCT and IOP for ocular hypertensives, and the prediction of increase of 0.70 millimeters of mercury for every 10 microns corneal thickening was made. The association between CCT and IOP for glaucoma subjects was weak, with an indication of an increase of 0.35 millimeters of mercury in IOP for every 10 micrometer corneal thickening. In conclusion, CCT assessment is a better predictor in identifying those at a higher risk, especially when combined with C, with come to this ratio, come to this asymmetry of uh, pure AG. The <laughs> Yamu and Kumon in 2018 also investigated the relation between CCT, the vitreous chamber depth, and asia length of adults. The vitreous chamber depth and asia length were assessed with ACE and ultrasonography. The mean age CCT, VCD, and ELA as presented. Statistical significant positive correlation was found between VCD and AL. The linear association between CCT and VCD and AL was not significant. AL and VCD were not statistically affected by age. Males had longer VCD and AL than females. Therefore, the difference in measured variables, their relationship with one another and with age, gender related differences would be fundamental to understanding the general eye health and development of strategies that will aid in the prevention, early diagnosis, management of ocular conditions. The short-term effect of, of some contact less wear on central corneal thickness and cornea, central corneal curvature in young adults was also investigated. The mean CCT, the corneal curvature, myopia, and corneal cylinder are uh, as presented. Surveillance performed on the CCT at pre task and after four and eight weeks of contact lens were showed that the decrease in corneal was not significant. Similarly, the differences in CCT at pre task and after four and eight weeks of lens were significant. In conclusion, contact lens were on a daily basis did not significantly corneal thickness and corneal corneal curvature. Yamo et al. 2010 a The effect of soft contact lens materials on tear film stability because of curvature was investigated. The tear film stability measured as time varied under polymeric material. But the best stable under the silicon hydrogen lens material. The corneal radius of curvature was not affected by the contact lens materials during the period of study, which was eight weeks. In conclusion, the transport B was the preferred contact lens material demonstrated stable tear film quality, which is an essential requirement for comfort and adaptation for successful contact lens wear. Yamo et al. 2011 C. Yamo et al. 2012B investigated the association between anthropometry and minus lens to blow and push to blow and spherical equivalent refraction. The, the anthropometric variables were height, weight, and body mass index calculated. The spherical equivalent Refraction was obtained by adding half of the cylinder to the spherical component. was found between age and the condition uh, assessed by minus less to go and push up to blow. The body mass index increased with age. There was an inverse correlation between body mass index and upper condition, push up to blow and minus less to blow. The association between spherical equivalent refraction and the anthropometric variables. The upper condition. Assess the push-up to minus lens to blood with while body mass index increased with age. Ogre and Yamo in 2009 studied the relationship between cigarette smoking and dry eye disease using symptoms, tear stability, and tear flow rate. Symptoms of dry eye included ocular discomfort, foreign body or gritty sensation, burning or stingy sensation, feeling tearing, stringing, blood vision, and increased frequency of breaking. Symptoms were scored using McMurray questionnaires. Tear stability was assessed using fluorescent tear breakup time and tear production using the Shaman's tear test strip. 
The speaker difference was found in tear, in dry eye symptoms between smokers and non-smokers. There was also significant difference in mean tear stability for smokers and non-smokers. Similarly, the mean tear flow rate was significantly different from that of non-smokers. Using PSC's correlation coefficient, significant associations were found between the duration of smoking and tear stability as well as tear flow rate with subjects who have smoked for more than 20 years having no tear break up time and tear flow rate. However, there was no association between symptoms and duration of smoking. In conclusion, these findings indicate that cigarette smoking may increase the chances of developing dry eye syndrome in patients who are at risk or may aggravate already existing dry eye problems. <laughs> the cola, also referred to as cola, which we call edu substances, and is consumed by the young and the old for different benefits. Study to investigate the effect of pressure in the protective young Nigerian adults was conducted by Yahoo in 2006. The IOP of each subject was assessed before 30, 60, and 90 minutes after consuming a seed of cola dry weight like between 25 and 35 grams. Results show that the change in IOP after 30 minutes was not significant, but after 60 minutes, IOP dropped significantly, and this Gender-related differences in mean IOP at different times were significant. The reduction in IOP was attributed partly to the presence of the mean constituents of cola, which caused the constriction of the ciliary body and its associated blood vessels, resulting in reduction of the volume of impure tumor secretion, having in all 2000. Also, the mutilated activity of the nitrosated <laughs> Aqua 